Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, for those of you who I haven't had the pleasure to meet yet, my name is Cantor Debbie Ballard, and uh, it has been my pleasure and my honor to work with Darrow for the last uh, several months and uh, helping him get ready for his bar mitzvah. And, but before we jump into our actual bar mitzvah this afternoon, today's Friday, and it's Def, we're all in wind down mode, right? You've had a nice, uh, relaxing day of vacation so far. So today is Shabbat, and uh, we're not allowed to actually light candles here on the ship. So I thought I would just open up tonight's service with a couple of little Shabbat songs. So hopefully you will all know the first song, uh, just to get into the Shabbat mode. Rested and relaxed? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> very good. So here we are at Darrow's Bar Mitzvah. This is a very special moment in a person's life. And so I like to, before we even start our service, just talk a little bit about what it even means for us to all be here together. So becoming a Bar Mitzvah is uh, a, a moment in a young human being's life where he takes the first step into Jewish adulthood. A lot of people think, oh, it's the end of something, and there is no end to something, although my wonderful Thursdays at the Nazca home will come to an end, maybe, maybe. I might just have to drop by. Uh, but that comes to an end, but, but a, a, a young person takes his first step into Jewish adulthood, so it's really a beginning. It's not an end. And today is the first day that Darrow takes his place among all of us as Jewish adults, where he takes on the responsibility and the privilege and the obligation of upholding the laws and traditions of Judaism. And I know that this is very important to Darrow. Um, I like to think of the bar mitzvah moment uh, the same way we think about the Florida driver's license or any state, if you will. So at 15 years old in Florida, your child studies a little book for a little while, walks into the DMV, takes a paper test, and then the state of Florida says, poof, you can drive. And you've never been behind the wheel of a car before. Well, you are just, that's your license to start learning, right? So today is Darrow's license to start becoming a Jewish adult. It doesn't mean he has arrived. Uh, Darrow's a very mature young man, and I'm sure through following all of your behaviors and as you model uh, what it means to be a good 
Jewish adult. I'm sure Darrow will follow in everyone's footsteps. So you are Darrow's community and you are performing a mitzvah by being here and celebrating this moment with him. Now on your chairs, you found a prayer book. So this is our door for today's service. And this prayer book was created for your maximum enjoyment, participation, and understanding. So enjoyment because I feel that uh, in order for us to enjoy something, there has to be meaning. And the more we understand, the more we enjoy something. And also participation. You all came here to hear Darrow, but he and I both need your participation as well. So those little songs, they were just your warm up. I'm gonna really wanna hear everybody joining in and singing some songs as we go along. And understanding, so this is the, at the core of what I do and why I do it. And so this prayer book has many interpretations about the prayers that we're going to be saying together. And as I move through the service, I also will be sharing some of my own personal interpretations on these prayers because if we are praying, that means we are connecting with God and we are trying to get a message to God. Well, there can't be, prayer can't be meaningful or effective if we don't understand what our mouths are even saying. So forget about the number of Hebrew syllables Darrow learned, but it's more about the meaning behind the words that we are all saying together that really matters. Now, as Darrow becomes a bar mitzvah, he is going to receive a very, very special gift. And that is not the gift that comes in an envelope, although that's special too. Uh, the gift that Darrow receives here today is the gift of a tallit. And the tallit is a prayer shawl that we wear as a sign of humility. It covers us as we pray to God. But what's really very special about the tallit is what we find on the ends of the tallit. So here on Darrow's tallit, we have a series of knots and strings. In biblical days, each knot and each string was given a numerical value. And the sum of those numbers represents a very significant number in Judaism. So here's a test. Let's see who's our greatest scholar in our congregation today. Who can tell me what is that significant number? What? You're close. 18, 18. No, not 18. You were closer with the 13. <coughs> We, Dara, what is it? Oh, switch your numbers around. Yes, high five. Dara's my scholar. Now, 613. Now, let's see if you really remember the test. Do you remember what those 613 represents? Who can tell me? What does 613 mean, Karen? The number of commandments. So God gave Moses and the Jewish people 613 commandments. You probably thought there were 10, but there were more. There were 613. 10 were like the do not pass go, do not collect $200. You must do these in order to even get a remotely passing grade. But 613, this was like the steps on the ladder on the path to righteousness. So by fulfilling all 613 myths vote, we become righteous people. So when Darrow receives his talit and he wears his talit, he is enveloped by God's commandments and he is reminded that following the laws from God are what make him the best person he can be. To present Darrow and read him a special prayer, we invite Mark Kaplan. O oh Lord, as we stand before you on this joyous occasion, we pray and we thank you for this blessing of life. You have bestowed upon us, you have bestowed upon us. We are grateful for Darrow and for the past 13 years of the joy he has brought to us and our family. Bless him, dear God, watch over him, protect him, guide him, help him continue to grow in body and mind, in soul and character. Bless him with the gifts of love and loyalty. May his life be rich and rewarding, and may his deeds bring pride to all of us. Amen. Amen.
For our next responsive reading, on our first responsive reading on page five, we invite mom and dad, Karen and Peter. We have come together as a congregation, mindful that each of us is an individual with special hopes and dreams, with personal worries and concerns. We read together. Each of us has dreams no one else can utter. Each feels joy no one else can share, and regrets which others cannot know. In this uniqueness of mind and personality, we are alone. And yet we are here together, united as a congregation. We find an atmosphere that stimulates awareness and motivation. In these surroundings of personal warmth, may we seek the strength that is within ourselves. If we are discouraged, may we seek hope. If we have been careless of time, may we reassess our goals and priorities. In the company of our family and friends, may we find the inspiration to warm our hearts and revitalize our minds and energies. Together, may we heighten our goals to achieve our own unique potential. Okay, so here's your opportunity to really give me your best effort in a song, okay? I don't normally do this in a bar mitzvah service, but we're small and we're intimate and it's very comfy. And so, um, and plus I used the traditional Hine Matov along with the Bim Bam a few minutes ago. So I'm gonna teach you my favorite version of a new Hine Matov. Are you in? Okay, awesome. So, um, there's a part of the song where it's going to be like what we call call and response, okay? So I'm going to sing, how good, and you're going to repeat it. So let's hear you sing it. How good, awesome. Then I'm going to sing, it is, and you're going to repeat, it is. I'm going to sing, to be, to be. Now, after we sing to be, we're all going to sing together. Okay, so let's sing together, together. One, two, three. Together. Awesome. So again, how good, how good. It, is it is to be, to be. together. Awesome, because ine matov uhanaim shevarachim gam yachad. How good it is that we are all gathered here to celebrate together. So what a perfect song, right? So the beginning of the song goes like this.
じゃあ Our next responsive reading, titled What is Holiness, is led by Ellen Boren, Lisa Gordon, Andrea Kaplan, and Stephanie Reifler. Please come up. when we strive to reach our highest goals and bring to our striving the best that is within ourselves. There is holiness when we are true to ourselves and stand firmly for truth though tempted to bad. There is holiness when we choose expressions of love and kindness rather than those of sarcasm or anger. There is holiness when we use our creative energies to celebrate, illuminate, or share freedom of beauty. There is holiness when people help the weak and seek freedom. There is holiness when we are kind to someone who cannot possibly be a servant to us. There is holiness when we promote family harmony. There is holiness when we forget what divides us and remember what unites us. There is holiness when we bring a moment of gladness to one who is lonely, a smile to the face of one who is sad, or help to one in need. There is holiness when we thank God and give praise to God for giving us the desire and the power to make our lives holy. On pages seven and eight, On pages seven and eight, there appear to be three prayers, but this is really one prayer broken into three distinct pieces. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the service, as I move through uh, the prayers that we are going to say together, I like to first talk about the meaning and the relevance of these prayers so that there's a unified feeling behind the words when we say them together. So in just a moment, we're going to all rise uh, for the barhu, which is our call to worship giving us an opportunity to prepare our minds and our bodies to connect with God. So it's like saying, here I am, God, I hope you're listening. And then Dara will lead us in the Shema, the oldest, most important prayer of the Jewish people, stating our fundamental belief in one God. And then continuing or completing the prayer, Dara will read the Biahafta in Hebrew and in English. And this is our roadmap to building a relationship with God. It's not easy to build a relationship with God, especially because we can't see God. We can't necessarily feel God. We don't really ever know where is God. That's probably one of the biggest burning questions of life. Who's God? What's God? Where's God? Well, the Via Hafta really reminds us that through following God's laws, we become closer to God. And that's how we build our relationship. Now, instead of opening an ark, we do not have a great big, beautiful uh, synagogue ark behind us. So uh, the people asked to come up will come up and actually just hold the Torah for everyone to see. So I would like to invite Evan Kaplan, Eric Kaplan, and Marnie and Damian Master. Please come up and would everyone please rise. And over here. You are a great human arc. Look at this team effort. That's wonderful. We are on the top of page seven. Bar Huat Adonai Hamevorach. Praise Adonai to whom all praise is due. Baruch Adonai Hamevorach Le'olam Va'ed. Praise be Adonai, to whom all praise is due, forever and ever. 
And please remain standing on the bottom of page seven. Dara will now lead us in the Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Yahafta eh Adonai Elohecha, Yuho Lavalcha, Uho Nashecha, Uho Maodecha, Lahayu Hadarim Ha Ela, Asher Anohi Mitzav Pahayim, A Levevecha, Vishinantam Levanecha, Vidibarta Bam, Vishiv Tacha, Bilve Tacha, Uvlech Tacha, Vadirk, Uvshach Baha, Uvkumecha, Ukshartam la o el yadecha, la hayu la tota ho vein enecha, uchtav tam al mazuzat ve techa uvish erecha, lama antis kuru ve esitem et kol mitzvotai, vihi yitem kedoshim le lohechem, ani adonai elohechem, asher ho tziti et chem ma ert, mitzrayim la hayu. Lechem Lelohim Ani Adonai Elohechem. You shall love your eternal God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your being. Set these words which I command you this day upon your heart. Teach them faithfully to your children. Speak of them in your home and on your way, when you lie down and when you rise up. Blind, bind them as a sign upon your hand. Let them be symbols before your eyes. Inscribe them on doorposts of your home and on your gates. Be mindful of my mitzvot and do them, so shall you consecrate yourselves to your God. I am your eternal God who led you out of Egypt to be your God. I am your eternal God. Our next responsive reading is an English adaptation of the Amidah, which is a prayer that we recite several times in a traditional uh, daily or Shabbat worship service, and usually we say it in Hebrew. In this case, I've replaced the Hebrew version with this English adapted version. Not because I don't feel that Hebrew is important, it is, it's what binds us to our ancestors, but the meaning of this prayer is so important that it should not be lost on mindless repetition. So most importantly, the Amidah is our reminder that we are God's partners in creation. Contrary to popular belief, God does not control every occurrence in the universe. We have been given personal human responsibility to use the gifts that God has already given us for our highest purpose, to create the lives that we want to create. We are also reminded that we cannot treat God like a giant vending machine in the sky saying, oh please can I have, and then fill in the blank and expect that God's actually going to give us that blessing or not. God doesn't work that way. God has already given us amazing gifts. I mean, just look outside at that ocean. Where else could that have come from? God gave us amazing gifts that we have the responsibility to use to create the lives that we want to create. To lead us in this reading, uh, we invite, oh, do we have Sarah and Jarrett? Yes, come on down. We cannot merely pray to you, O oh God, to end war, for we know that you have made the world in a way that humans must find their own path to peace within themselves and with their neighbor. We cannot merely pray to you, O oh God, to end starvation, for you have already given us the resources with which to feed the entire world, if we could only use them wisely. We cannot merely pray to you, O oh God, to root out prejudice, for you have already given us eyes with which to see the good in all people, if we would use them rightly. We cannot merely pray to you, O God, to end despair, for you have already given us the 
power to clear away slums and to give hope if we would only use our power justly. We cannot merely pray to you, O God, to end disease, for you have already given us great minds with which to search out cures and healing, if we would only use them constructively. Therefore, we pray to you instead, O God, for strength, determination, and willpower, to do instead of just to pray, to become instead of merely to wish. For your sake and ours, speedily and soon, that our land may be safe and that our lives may be blessed. May the words that we pray and the deeds that we do be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Keeping in the theme of gratitude, we continue on page 10 with the 12 blessings of gratitude. So these are blessings we're actually commanded to say every morning when we wake up. And the timing of these blessings is very important because we believe that the way that we start our day is going to reflect on the way that we continue throughout the day. So for instance, if Darrow woke up every morning and jumped out of bed and said, thank you God for this awesome opportunity to go to school today, right? Do you do that? No. <laughs> really? Why? <laughs> okay. That's a very honest answer. So here's what happens if you, when you do that. When you wake up grateful for the opportunity to go to school, you're going to take learning more seriously, right? You're going to make sure all of your homework is complete before you play Fortnite, right? <laughs> because that's your priority. You're going to build great relationships with your teachers, right? You're going to perform well on your tests. You're going to take very good care of everything that you uh, work on and that you study and you hand in your homework on time and do all of those great things, why? So you can get good grades, go on to a good career and be grateful, and be grateful because life is good. Now, if the grown-ups in the room, if you and I woke up every morning, and I do, I don't know about you, but if you woke up every morning and jumped out of bed and said, thank you, God, for this awesome opportunity to go to work today, instead of, oh, God, I can't believe I have to go to work today, right? How does that feel? Doesn't it feel so much better just to say thank you for my job? Thank you for this job that allows me to provide for my family, to give uh, take my kids on awesome vacations, to give them digital devices that they can play on. Life is good because we went to our jobs and we took pride in the work that we did. We build good relationships with our coworkers and our bosses. We cultivate uh, those relationships and we put out a very strong work product because that's what we're paid well to do. And the better we do it, the more money we make. And then our husbands and wives, they actually like us more because we're bringing home more money. Oh my God, life is so good because it all started with gratitude. Darrow is going to read these blessings in Hebrew and then we are going to respond to him in the English on page 10. Darrow? Baruch Adonai, Elohim, Melech Olam, Asher Nantan, Vesech Vina, Bahachim, Bain Yom Uvein Laila. Praise be the eternal God, who has implanted mind and instinct within every living being. Baruchata Adonai, Elohimi Melacha Olam, Sheasani Yisrael. Praise be the eternal God, who has made me a good person. Baruchata Adonai, Elohimi Melacha Olam, Sheasani Bain Horin. Praise be the eternal God, who has made me to be free. Baruch Adonai, Elohim, Melech HaOlam, Okei Ach Ivrim. Praise be the eternal God, who helps the blind to see. Baruch Adonai, Elohim, Melech HaOlam, Malbish Arumim. Praise be the eternal God, who clothes the naked. Baruch Adonai Elohim Melech Olam Matir Asurim. Praise be the Eternal God who frees the captive. Baruch Adonai Elohim Melech Olam Tokef Kafufim. Praise be the Eternal God who lifts up the fallen. 
Berachata Adonai, Elohim, Melacha Olam, Hamachim meets a day gather. Praise be the eternal God who makes firm our steps. Berachata Adonai, Elohim, Melacha Olam, Ozir Yisrael, be Gvura. Praise be the eternal God who girds our people Israel with strength. Barachata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Otir Yisrael Betif Ara Praise be the eternal God who crowns Israel with glory. Barachata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Hanotein Laya Eif Koach Praise be the eternal God who gives strength to the weary. Barachata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Hama Avir Sheina Me Enai Utnuma Me Af Apai Praise be the eternal God who removes sleep from the eyes, slumber from the Please rise. On the top of page 11. Ki mitzion te to Darrow. Great. And then Ellen, would you please come up? Mom closest to Darrow. There you go. Ellen. Oh. Careful. Careful. Okay. And stand on Peter's right side. Okay. The passing of the Torah is a symbolic act that we perform that reminds us of our Jewish responsibility to pass Jewish traditions, Lador Vador, from generation to generation. Now, this is something that we actually automatically do. It's embedded in our DNA as Jewish people. And here's how I know that. So somewhere in your life, you have eaten, said, or done something inherently Jewish. And then somebody has said to you, why do we eat, say, or do that thing? And you've said, I have no idea. My mother did it, my grandmother did it, it's just what we do. And as Jews, it's just what we do. We pass traditions on. Traditions are very, very important to us. Ritual is very important to us. So this is what we mean when we say we're cultural Jews. It's not because we're religious, but because performing those rituals <laughs> binds us to something bigger, binds us and, and, and enjoins us to people that we didn't even know, that maybe didn't even have the privilege of observing their Judaism. But we get to do it, and so it's important to us. So today, Darrow becomes a bar mitzvah as he receives the gift of Torah from his grandmother and his parents' hands. Darrow, 
Your mother now holds the Torah as she once held you. But holding on is not the way of life. And your family must begin to let you go so that you may find your own way in this world. As you will receive this Torah from your family's hands, so do you accept the challenge that comes to you on this day. This challenge is one of both freedom and responsibility, calling you to affirm not only your own dignity, but the dignity of others as well. May your actions bring peace and healing to all who know you, and may your struggles be for the good. Torah is our path to peace. From its devotion to wisdom, we learn to strive for wisdom. From its commitment to the good, we are compelled to seek the good. And from its teaching of harmony, we struggle to live in harmony. The spirit of Torah dwells within us as we turn to the lesson of this moment. Odero, take this Torah. Yep, there you go. You're in my human ark now, and this Torah is yours for the moment. So as you become a bar mitzvah now, I want to share a few words of wisdom with you. Careful, don't drop that Torah. That's my first word of wisdom. Do not ever drop a Torah. Do you know what happens when we drop a Torah? We have to not eat for 40 nights. Or for, actually, it's, it's 40 days. So during the sunlight hours, you'd have to not eat at all. So you do not want to drop the Torah. We want to hold on to that Torah. But I think that that kind of actually reminds us when we say we want to hold on to the Torah. That may not necessarily be the physical instruction, but it definitely is the emotional uh, intention. We want to hold on to this Torah. Why? Because this Torah is not an object that we worship, but rather it's a series of books that we read, and inside those books are all the wisdom of the world. Not only the history of our people, but all of the lessons, all of the important lessons that God wanted us as humans to learn. And there's not a challenge that you can encounter in this year, 2019, where the answer to that challenge would not be found in the Torah. So it's a very important collection of wisdom that we as your Jewish community always want you to hold on to. Now, as part of becoming a bar mitzvah, you are going to share this Torah with everyone here. And we do this, again, symbolically because, well, when Moses received the Torah from Mount Sinai, right, um, he went up to talk to God and he got the Torah and he brought the Torah down to the people. So here we all are on the proverbial Mount Sinai and Darrow and mom and dad, you're going to take this Torah on a little journey. So I'm going to sing a song and you're going to walk the Torah around the room. Now, when the Torah comes by you, it is customary to touch the Torah and then kiss your hand. Or you can use a tali, or you can use the corner of your prayer book. And this is symbolic of receiving the holiness from the Torah. Okay? So, Ellen, you stay here with me for a sec. Mom and Dad and Darrow, you go take the Torah. You just stay right here. Mom and Dad and Darrow, you're going to take that Torah on a little journey, and we'll all sing O Shalom.
you may have a need. Before we begin our Torah reading, Dara will share with us some uh, important notes and information on his Torah portion today. My Torah portion Sad is taken from the book of Leviticus, the third of the five books of Moses. The book of Leviticus is known for the time that Moses delivered the laws from God to the people, and these laws dictated how they should live and all the details of what was expected of them. Sad is specifically about the laws relating to sacrifice. In biblical days, prayer was performed by sacrifice or other, or, or of either something of value, uh, food or spice, or something precious like time or effort. What was most unique about prayer at the time was how ritual was a very important part of prayer. A ritual is something you do over and over again, usually having meaning to the person experiencing the ritual. For prayer, there were many forms of sacrifice and offerings such as sin offering for when we did something wrong, a guilt offering for when we felt bad, or a gratitude offering for when we felt grateful, or a hope or wish offering when we wanted something to, good to come for us. What made, ritual even, what made ritual even more special was that all of the senses were engaged in the ritual. The senses we used were seeing, smelling, hearing, tasting, and touching. When we perform prayer in biblical days, we could see, smell, hear, taste, and touch our sacrifice, making prayer a much more meaningful experience. Today, uh, today we believe in a personal relationship with God, for the ritual of prayer is not as important today, but other rituals are very important in my life. We have a special gathering for New Year's. We eat great food together at my house that is so pretty, and we experience the outside together. We also light a yartzit candle for my grandfather, which helps us to remember him by having the flame burn in honor of his memory. Another ritual in my family is Thanksgiving at my brother's house. Rituals help us create memories, so we always remember the special moments of our lives. Our Torah portion reading is broken into three sections. Each section is called an aliyah, and the word aliyah means uh, on, to go up, or it means to honor, and so, uh, or to, to go to a holy place. So for our first Aliyah, we invite mom and dad for the blessings before and after the Torah portion. Yeah. 
we're not done on you, the rock. And then I know I'm a lot of not to be new. I broke up the other night, no thing I do wrong. Our second honor is for Grandmother Ellen. Come up on this side. There's wires, Karen. Ellen. Oh. Come on in over here. Uh, Dara, Dara's in the middle. Okay. All right. I'll sing with you. Is that okay? No? Yeah? Okay, one, two, three. Barhu et Adonai Hamburra, Baruch Adonai Hamburra, Elom Baet, Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Haolam, Asher Bahar Banu Miko Hamim, Vinatan Lano et Torato, Baruch Ata Adonai, no te na Torah. Amen. Don't go anywhere. Okay. Ufasat et begataha velavahash begadihim achre mihim vehotzi et hadeshen al mihutz lamahaneha al makahum tahor. Ha'ish ha'hamiz bea tu karbo yom pich behe ubi er eleha akohen etzim ba boker ba boker ve'ara aleha ha olaha ve'hitir aleha eleha shlamim. Eheheheish, tamid, tu kad ahamiz bea, loho tich behehehehe. Darrow becomes a bar mitzvah as he is called to the Torah to recite the final blessings. And so it gives me great pleasure to call to the Torah for the first time as a bar mitzvah, Mr. Darrow Nafka. Baruch et Adonai Hamburah. Baruch Adonai Hamburah le'olam ba'ed. Baruch Adonai Hamburah le'olam ba'ed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam. Asher Bahar Banu Mikol Ha'amim. Vanatan Lanu et Torato. Baruch Ata Adonai. No tin ha Torah. Amen. Bezo Torah. Amen. Ha 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 ha. A grave ota. Bene aharon. Leaf ne adonai. El pene he. Amis bea. Beherim. Mimenu. 
Bekum Sahoho Mi Sole Amiha Omi Janaha Be Eight Ko Avonaha Asher Ahamin Ha 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 Be He Kir Amis Be He He Ah Be He Ah Mi Ha Ho Ah As Karataha Ladonai Nahana Terry Mimena Yo Hulu Aha Rahun Ivanaha Matso Teahel Bamakom Kadohus Ahsar Ohel Mo Ehi Yo Hulu Ha 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 Baruch Ata Adonai, Elohim Melech HaOlam, Asher Natan Lanyu Torah Penet, Bechaye Olam Nata Bezochenu, Baruch Ata Adonai, Neotin HaTorah. Amen. Please rise. Vezo Tatora Asher Samosha Leaf Nevene Yisra El Alpi Adonai Beyad Moshe Dear God, today is a very special day. It is the day I become a bar mitzvah, which means I am a Jewish adult and I must begin to take responsibility for myself. I am looking forward to the changes that will come in my life when I become when I begin becoming more independent and responsible for the important things I must do. Becoming an adult also means I'll make good choices. I will live thoughtfully and I will uphold the core Jewish values that we practice at camp, like Yosher, which is integrity, Kavod, which is respect and Gemalut Hasadim, which is acts of love and kindness. There are many people I want to thank who helped me reach this moment in my life. I want to recognize my mom and dad for being loving and supportive of me. I appreciate how they are always on my team and make it a priority to spend quality time together. My parents are truly the best and I and are the most generous and loving people I know. I also want to recognize Nana Ellen and how special to, to me and writes me beautiful letters that I receive every day at camp. I appreciate my brother Christian and how he proudly serves our country as chief in the Coast Guard. He's a really fun guy to be around, as well as my sister-in-law Carrie, who likes roller coasters as much as me. I also appreciate my brother Jared, who is very important executive at the Orange Bowl, and just an all-around great guy. And of course, my sister-in-law Sarah, who is always there for me with an open heart. And my sister and brother-in-law Craig, who unfortunately couldn't be with us today, but for good reason, as they are home caring for our newest memory, member of the family, baby Ella. I am so fortunate to have such amazing brothers and sisters that are so talented in their own ways and are such great role models and are always there for me. Last but not least, I'd like to thank Cantor Debbie for all of her teaching and help preparing for this big milestone day. I pray for many things in my lifetime. I aspire to attend Fort Lauderdale High School and then go to college to prepare for my future. I want to learn interesting things, get good grades, and make new friends. I pray for health, happiness, and a long life for all of my family. It always makes me happy to celebrate occasions with them, and I look forward to celebrating many more. Last year, we suffered a huge tragedy in our community, and I pray for its safety and healing. 
I also pray for a better world for my nieces and nephews and young cousins. I pray for peace in Israel and safety for all who live there because Israel is the homeland of the Jewish people. I learned about the creation of Israel in a recent school project and it made me feel proud, but at the same time sad, there's so much conflict here. I pray that Jewish people experience peace and love in their lives. I'm so grateful to be standing here today, surrounded by my closest family. Thank you to all for being here today to show you love, to show you love and support me. It means the world to my parents and me to have you here. I love you all. Good job, Darrow. Mom and Dad, would you like to come up and say some words on Darrow's behalf? I promise my brother will only speak 45 minutes. Yeah. Uh, first, I want to acknowledge and thank my amazing wife, Karen, for putting this together. She really worked hard at it. She's also an amazing mom. 95% uh, of anything Dara does well is her responsibility and her, uh, I, it's, it's all about her. And you know, as Karen says, she's not taking her foot off the pedal. Buckle up, right, Evan? <laughs> so, uh, at 56, some people thought I was really crazy to have another child. I think I was one of those some people, by the way. Um, but I saw how Karen appreciated my relationship with my children and the gift that I had for so long. So how could I deny her that gift? So along came this young man and it was probably one of the greatest things I've ever done in my life. Um, some of you older people in here probably remember the movies, black and white movies, where the calendar was flipping down to show the passage of time. Well, I went through that with my older children, but with Darrow, it's like on warp speed. I mean, it seems like yesterday, 828 Northeastern, Northwestern Hospital, and this little person came into our lives, 858. 858. I have so many wonderful memories, and I'm just going to share a couple, just to, which will sort of connote what Darrow is all about. Um, Karen and I used to drive Darrow to JCC for daycare every day, and in the bitter cold winter of Chicago, I'd get out of the car, Karen would be unlatching his car seat, he would jump into the front seat, grab the steering wheel, look at me with all his determination, and go, my drive. I go, Darrow, it's cold, honey, we've got to go to school. My drive. Well, it would take, I don't know how many my drives before I'd airlift him out of there. But. And then I remember silly things. We, his last uh, pediatrician appointment in Chicago, uh, lesson three. And we don't know where this came from, but he, uh, the, the pediatrician said, where, where are you moving to, Darrow? And he goes, well, manners. It's like, where did that come from? <laughs> Darrow is, is funny, and I don't think there's anybody that can make Sophie and Livy laugh harder than Darrow. Right, Soph, Liv, Carl. Uh, if you ever saw the movie Despicable Me, um, <laughs> Darrow was, uh, we were driving the car one day, maybe five, in a car seat, it was really quiet, and in the best groove, Darrow goes out of nowhere, my wife, Debbie, <laughs> we just lost it. <laughs> to underscore how funny Darrow is, so in the beginning of this school year, uh, we went to an open house where you walk around and you meet the teachers and they tell you about things. And we go to the last class, which is PE, and Coach Thompson, Coach Thompson's like the coolest teacher in the school. And uh, so he gave his spiel and he came over to me he asked me how he did because I'm the PTA president. Two more meetings, two more meetings left. Anyway, um, he said, you know, so don't tell Darren. That kid is funny. I mean, he's really funny, but don't tell him. So I'm telling you, don't tell him. Don't tell Coach Johnson. Darrow's not just funny. He's a warm, compassionate, loving person. He doesn't have a, 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 a whatchamacallit, I lost the train of thought here, I'm being a little emotional. He doesn't have a mean or jealous bone in his body. He's, uh, 
he's had so many opportunities where he could throw his friends under the bus, but he won't do it. Most recently had an opportunity and he wouldn't do it. I think that's something he says about his loyalty and the type of person he is. Darrow, um, you're all here because Darrow wanted you here. Um, he didn't want a big party. He didn't want any friends. He wanted you people. He loves his Nana. He loves his brothers and sister-in-laws and brothers-in-law. He loves his aunts and uncles. He loves his cousins. He's crazy about his nieces and nephew. They're more like brothers and sisters, but you know. he loves his extended family. By the way, cousins, when I said cousins, first cousins once removed Mary also, by the way. Um, Uncle Bill and Aunt Marion, uh, Heather, Lorna, you too. Darrow uh, is just a great kid, and not a kid anymore, now you're a man. Um, I'm very proud of you, mom is very proud of you, we're both very proud of you. You have a lot of future, big future ahead of you. A lot of good things are gonna happen, it doesn't end to you. Um, and we know it's gonna, it's gonna be wonderful, and I'm gonna stick around a few more years and make sure I see it all happen. I love you. I don't I'm not the speech master of this family, but I am so incredibly proud of what you accomplished today. And Debbie, you can agree with me, right? Yeah. We looked at each other at our first meeting and we went, how are we going to get through this? Sure. And lo and behold, he became your star student. Yeah. And we would just high five every after every meeting. Yeah, and that's just one representation of all the things you can put your mind to and what you can do. And, and I love you, Dee. So I was going to say that same thing, Karen, but back in the very first meeting, uh, when I came to the NASCA home to meet Darrow, Karen and I said, what? Oh, I know, I know. Uh, when I first walked into their home uh, and I sat down with Darrow, Karen was like, well, you're just gonna do the best job you can. Darrow didn't really even have that much interest in what we were laying out on the table was going to get done. But he said, yep, I'll do it. It's okay. And he ran back into his room to play his next video game. Right? He's a great video game player, though. I know that for a fact. And basically, over the last, I don't know how long has it been, like over a year. Well, we worked together for six months, but we've known each other for more than a year. So, um, so Darrow started and every time he would show up, he got it done. Got everything done, little by little, one little step at a time. Never gave me a hard time. Never made me worry that he wasn't gonna be ready. Never said, oh, this isn't for me. Um, had a positive attitude all the way. Made it so easy. One day I said to him, hey, do you want to come tutor my other kids? Because you're really getting pretty good at this. He sings really well. His voice, he hit his notes perfectly in his prayers and in his Torah portion. And even though sometimes he's not the most confident in the way he sings, I can tell you, Darrow, you did an amazing job. Now, kind of like Peter said, I can vouch for the fact I have now two grown children of my own and helping raise two grandchildren. Raising children is not the easiest thing to do, but I have a philosophy on raising kids. And my philosophy is, has to do with apples and trees. And so it says, apples don't fall far from trees. And in my opinion, they don't even roll. Darrow, you are a wonderful human being. Why? Because of the two human beings standing next to you, number one, and because of your extended network of family, close family, that's here with you today. And you have 
had all of these family members and your mom and dad instill these amazing family values in you. And I can see how much you love your nieces, nephews, and cousins, and I can see how much you love your family. And Karen and Peter, I just wanna say thank you for trusting me and for allowing me to come into your home. It's been a long time since I've actually gone to parents' houses, and coming to your house has always been one of the most pleasant highlights of my week. And you're kind of like my peaceful spot to go. And you guys are really wonderful people. Karen, you work effortlessly around the clock to make sure Darrow has what he needs and does what he needs to do and completes all of his requirements. You are always right there next to him every step of the way. And I know that that's not easy and I just wanna say that you're an amazing mom and I thank you both for the opportunity. Darrow, I'm so crazy proud of you and I think you have done such an amazing job. So I sing you the priestly blessing, not just for you, Darrow, but for your mom and dad as well, because they've been really instrumental in getting you to this place. And so I want to say uh, a blessing for everybody. <laughs> You're almost done, Dara. You're almost done. I need some more human arts. Uh, may I please invite Thomas Nasca, Penny Williams, and Mary and Jim Cullen to please come up and hold the Torah. And would everyone please rise as we recite the Elenu, sing the Elenu together as a community. Come stand next to me, please. Aveinu lishabea wa adon hako wa te kedu wa we od velo Kelkenu Kahem, the go rale nu, Keho Hamonam, Ba Anak nu go reem, Umisha Rabi Mumodim, Leaf name Alech, Mahe Hamwahim, Akadosh Parohu. Please remain standing as we recite together as a community of 
Israel in memory of those we have loved and lost on page 18. Karen, this is especially in memory of Erwin Boren, Karen's father. We pray that his memory be a blessing upon all of our lives as we recite this prayer together. Yikadal v'yikadash shemei rabah v'yalma divara chirute v'yam lich malchute v'chayechon uv'yomechon uv'chayedechol be Yisrael v'agala uv'izman kariv v'imru amen yehe shemei rabah mevarach v'olam olamei amaya Yibarach v'yishtabach v'yipa'ar v'yitromam v'yitnasei Vita dar vita le vita lal shmeid kudisha berichu la eva min kol birchata vishirata tush birchata v'nechamata da amiran ve'alma ve'imru amen yehe shlama raba min shemaya v'chayim aleinu v'al kol yisrael ve'imru amen osa shalom b'mramav hu ya osa shalom aleinu v'al kol yisrael ve'imru amen please be seated. Okay, we will continue over here. Daryl, come on down. And let's invite Brett Sherman and Scott Gordon. Would you please come up? passing of the tradition, I'm going to ask you one thing that's different. When I finish the Kiddush, if you'd all give a toast to the fruit of the vine. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech balam Borei pri agafen Fruit of the vine. Rukata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Alon, Hamotzi Lechem Min Haaretz. Amen. Amen. Okay, why don't you tear a piece of that off and you can share with the gentleman up here with you. You can use the knife, you can just tear it. It's so But tear a piece so, so Scott and Darrow can have a piece. There you go. Okay. All right, gentlemen. How about it? There you go. You can turn to your seat. Darrow, we're going to come out front and center. So ladies and gentlemen, while he's chewing, <laughs> I know that you all join me in wishing Darrow a very hearty mazel tov, right? Darrow, we are all so very proud of you. You've accomplished such a tremendous amount today, and now you get to go and have fun and enjoy the rewards of your hard labor. So I now release you from all future study and tutoring <laughs> obligations because you are now officially and proudly a bar mitzvah. Darrow's Bar Mitzvah. Oh wait, stay in your seats. Stay in your seats. We hope we can see the screen.